Okay, let's do this. Good afternoon, everyone. Good morning. Can everybody hear me? How's the transmission? Excellent. Much appreciated for confirming that we have proper transmission. Uh, welcome to another MySound webinar. Today we have a case study of Cal, and uh, we have uh, two guest lectures that I'm uh, proud to introduce to you in a while. But uh, first, as you've come to expect of us, um, let's look at some household notes first. Uh, for that, I'm going to share my screen. And um, here we go. Okay. So, as I said, today's webinar will be a case study of Cal in a very, very exciting project that uh, I'm eager to learn more about. But before doing so, um, before doing so, um, what we're about to see will be, of course, uploaded to, uh, to YouTube, um, but we'll get to that later. Um, we're using the Zoom platform, uh, communication platform for today's webinar, as always, and that means that I would like to familiarize you with the platform so that you can ask answer and uh, question, because we encourage you to uh, ask um, uh, questions and answers. And uh, in order to do so, we would like you to make use of the chat feature. So um, in order to access the chat feature, you can either click on participants or on chat, in which case a window opens up to the right hand side. If you click on participants, you will see the fellow participants that are joining you in today's session. Uh, whenever you would like to ask a question, we kindly ask you to use the raise hand feature, which is the button that you will find on the bottom of the right side pane. If you click that button, uh, a blue hand icon appears in the corner of my eye informing me that you are about to ask a question, at what time I will try to find a white space in today's guest lecture's narrative uh, and try to ask your question, present your question to them. In order to ask the actual question itself, we would like you to use the chat function, which you can activate by clicking on the balloon icon, in which case the right side pane splits in half. Uh, there's a new window with a chat box at the bottom, which speaks for itself. If you want to address the nation, just enter a message in the field and uh, everybody will see it. But if you happen to uh, see a fellow colleague, family member or friend among the participants and you want to uh, uh, send that person a message in private, then you can do so as well by uh, selecting that person, uh, selecting that person in private. OK, we are, of course, also joined uh, by those that are watching us uh, as we speak uh, in the Meyer Sound user community on Facebook, which is our Facebook group. Um, um, where we're streaming as we speak. Welcome to those people as well. Uh, it currently counts over 8,500 8, members, 8,500 members, and, um, and that, is, that is awesome. So that concludes uh, the household notes as far as I'm concerned. This is the, uh, the week of Cal. So earlier this week you saw a presentation by myself uh, introducing you to Cal, our column array loudspeaker that allows us to steer the sound in the vertical plane. And um, yesterday, my uh, Mexican colleague, uh, Oscar Barrientos, did the same in Spanish. And that means that for those that want to know more about Cal, please go to the Thinking Sound YouTube chan channel, where you will find a recording of this, uh, of this webinar, because today we're going to see this product in action. And um, as I said, those videos can be found uh, on YouTube. And that means that uh, today we're going to see a case study where all these tools that have been used or are being used in the Meyer Sound Precision tool set, we're going to see case study with emphasis on Cal, but rest assured in terms of design and deployment and signal management, everything that we've discussed from the tool set is used in such an application. So um, I'm very much looking forward to that. And that brings us uh, to today's uh, two guest lecture. Um, I will introduce uh, Jose. Jose Godin is a technical support specialist at Myersound. He has brought a, 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 another guest lecture, but I will leave it to Jose to do the introduction of his guest. Uh, and that means that without further ado, um, let's go to Jose. I will stop sharing and uh, very exciting uh, stuff that we're about to see. Uh, go for Jose. Thank you, Merlin. I hope you see my screen. Yes, sir. I can see your screen. 
Great. Uh, so, hi, hello everyone. Welcome to this uh, case study. Uh, today we talk about a massive project, and of which a small part is about Cal. There's um, there's a lot of Cal's in this design, but it's the scale of the event around it is is even much uh, bigger. Uh, today we um, co-hosting. Yes, today I'm co-hosting with Martin Reich. That is, uh, you can see on the video. Hello, everybody. Um, Martin was the sound designer for Fête de Vigneron for the, this whole event. He owns a consulting company called Audio Consulting, and uh, he's been consulting on on the UEFA, uh, the Champions League finals. We worked together at Montreux Jazz Festival. And uh, so he was working there at uh, Fête de Vignon in a um, sound design and accompanying, accompanying capacity. Uh, that's including uh, radio frequency microphones, uh, all the recordings um, management, and especially interfacing with the artistics, well, the artists, the uh, production, and all the logistical issues that happen, and then the technical department, and sometimes with me. Um, uh, doing all the rest of the magic. Uh, my name is Jose. I work at Marisol Tech Support, uh, worldwide tech support, and um, I, I'm, par I'm participating in education, also uh, managing these kinds of projects that are fun to do. Martin, do I did I say everything? Everything's fine so far. Okay. <laughs> all right, so we'll move on to this project. Um, it's a massive project again and it's um it's the recognition of the land owners of this part of switzerland um that recognize the work of the people that work their land especially in the wine yards so the the winemaker brotherhood in Veve and by the by lake geneva are recognizing this work and so they organize an event for every generation so this is happening uh every generation and the generations be, had to be defined between 20 and 25 years. So um, this event uh, is technologically different every time because uh, the technology has evolved so much in 20 years that the, um, the whole possibilities are changed. And so that's what we have this year. We wonder what we get in 20, 25 years and we all already know what we had in the past. So um, it's a massive project. Uh, and before we go into the technical details, I'm going to play a video. So this is a quick trailer of the uh, three hours show that that happened on this stage, um, and as you can see, it's uh, the floor is in, the floor is a screen, so it's an LED screen that hosts um, about five thousand people and um, multiple animals. I will get in the next slide into numbers. Um, that's the numbers we have about the show. Um, there's um, the plan is about is twenty shows in three weeks. Some shows happen during the day, sh some shows happen during the night, and there's a theme around each show uh, that is based on uh, with the part of Switzerland that hosts the show. Um, the cast is about 5,500 5, 5, people on stage and in the arena uh, for about 240 musicians. There are 40 cows, 
during the presentation, during the, the show. Eight horses, 15 goats. Um, the attendance for this um, year, 2019, was 375,000 spectators. So people in the arena uh, are uh, about these numbers, but the city saw about a million people uh, move over three weeks, move into the city. Um, the arena is a temporary arena. So it's been built in during eight months. It's been built for uh, this show. Uh, it, it has 24,000 seats. And the reason for 24,000 seats is that every member, every inhabitant of the city should have a seat in the arena. So even though the city has been growing, the place where it's situated has not been growing. So the arena has been moving higher in height to accommodate for more sitting. Uh, in terms of Myerson loudspeakers, uh, we're looking at 595 speakers, uh, so loudspeakers hanging around, uh, among them 48 cows that have a very precise purpose. Um, 23 galaxies, there's 10 mixing consoles hidden in the, in the whole um, arena. That's not counting the broadcast consoles that will be outside on a broadcast compound. Uh, it takes nine months to build it. And so around the arena, as you can see, there's a million visitors, uh, 230,000 bottle of wine, and about uh, 23,000 liters of milk for the animals that will live uh, in pens in the city, but right next to the, um, to the arena. Uh, it's, so it's happening on the shores of Lake Geneva, um, or also Lake Léman. Um, in the city of Vevey, that is there in the corner, and you might recognize that Montreux from the Montreux Jazz Festival is right next to it. It's, uh, as Martin can attest, it's uh, six kilometers by bike, because he's been running back and forth uh, during, during a couple months uh, in the area. Uh, this, all these wine yards and all this scenery is protected by the United Nations. The UNESCO is protecting this. Um, and so it's been, it's been the theater of all this uh, work and all these events over the past uh, centuries. Um, as I said, the, the FET is happening in Vevey, so that's the city you can see here on the center of the screen, uh, on the place where the market is happening, and it's called the uh, Grand Place de Vevey, uh, that usually is a parking space. Um, it's also mandatory by the Brotherhood, so the Brotherhood of the winemakers, which is organizing the event, also made it mandatory that this is the spot where this is happening. So this plate is, is having all the years of the previous editions and it's inside, it's on the, the, the place and that's where it's happening. Um, there is no way, well, they need to change their own rules to make it happen in a different, uh, they will have to change them to make it happen in a different place. Um, so, in the 17th century, it started in the 17th century with this event where they had a parade where people will be um, walking to uh, thank the people that were doing the work. And in 1797, uh, it was recognized as an event and it was um, the first edition of the Fête de Vignon to, um, happening in Vevey. Uh, over there, and this is this is where most of these rules that I've been referring to have been uh, established. So it's been um, in the next years there was a revolution in Switzerland. It can happen, and um, because of that they had to skip a couple of years. And this is where they decided that um, it will be generation to generation. So uh, they had to establish a number of years for a generation, and also uh, with the time there's been more and more. Uh, regions around that have been invited. As Switzerland has been growing over the centuries, uh, they, they started to invite the, the neighboring regions so that all the cultures from the winemaking, from the agriculture, but also the cultural events will be represented um, in the arena and at the event. So 1797 was the first one, and then it was followed uh, 1819, 1833, and so on until 1927. This is a painting that depicts the 1819 edition. Um, and in 1955, that was the first edition that was having a PA. So this is the first edition where loudspeakers were present, 
and um, the electrician was tasked to just make it louder. And so he was amplifying the music and you can see there's two poles here uh, with column arrays already back in the day, uh, covering the whole arena. Uh, fast forward 22 years later, 1977, uh, first radio microphones. Uh, again, the same event, um, the same ideas, but at the end of the day, um, new technology in, in the form of wireless microphones. Um, 1999 was uh, using a central point of diffusion. Uh, this is my sound speakers for, the, for those of you that remember lifting MSL5s and MSL3s and MSL2s. Um, if you remember carrying them, this is what you see hanging here on the mast. Um, so 1999 uh, was already, was again more evolved. And that was the last edition before no, uh, 2019. Um, so this is the square where it's built. So um, this is the normal market place in Vevey. Uh, that's where it's happening in, on a normal day. And um, what the engineers made happen uh, was putting this arena inside this uh, square. Uh, it was a massive process. There's been, it's been, uh, uh, it's been, we spent a long time working the loads, for example, in the arrays. Um, and also um, they, they had an extension that had to be built over the lake um, to accommodate the whole 24,000 seats uh, arena. And again, as I said, it, only, it can only happen in this marketplace because that's the rule. And the other rule is that you need 24,000 seats because the city has been growing and that's all the people that are in the city. Um, so a lot of technical challenges are very interesting, but now, right now we'll focus on the Cal part of it and we might come back with another um, webinar on the techni techni technological challenges that uh, we were faced uh, here. So here I will hand over to Martin. Uh, this is an, an, an aerial view of the uh, arena. And as you can see, uh, there, is, there was the decision to have five different stages. Um, so five different stages, one in the center and, and four on each cardinal uh, point. There are two main access ramps. So these ramps will lift and allow access into the, uh, what we call the field of play. And there are four ramps used for choirs. And so um, based on that, I I'll hand over to Martin to hear about the approach to the uh, sound system design. As you can imagine, if you have five stages, the director asks you to have uh, sound on all five stages. And most probably he will ask you to have sound on all five stages at the same time, which is quite a challenge. And it depends on the the content you're being to, about to play. So they ask for percussive uh, content, which I said from the beginning would not work due to the distances. And then we went into a discussion what could work and to this, take decisions on this, uh, we developed a, a, a software which allowed us to simulate the arena and the time of arrival. And we could play with multi-track playback from Pro Tools, uh, the content, via these stages, these virtual stages, and listen to it on headphones with head tracking. So if you would turn the head, it would help uh, orientate versus the stage where the sound comes from. And that way we were able to decide which piece could be played in what configuration. And this, what you see here is uh, the, the software, the simulation software, which was programmed by Jose which helped a lot to take artistic decisions and finally helped us to put this uh, whole piece on stage. And it worked out that in reality, it was exactly uh, this, uh, the outcome was exactly what we heard in the simulation. They didn't believe in the first place. So they, at one rehearsal, they asked if we could just change the configuration and have two choirs singing on two different stages that one piece and we ended uh, up with a mess of uh, time of arrival and it stopped quite quickly. So uh, some pieces we could play all four stages at the same time with choirs on all four stages singing the same song and it was quite impressive uh, how that sounds like. 
but the most of the pieces with percussive uh, content it was just um, impossible to do anything distant so come back to the stages uh the five stages that, that was a demand and then it was a demand to have localization it was a demand to have live music and uh people were, the cast was uh, must be able to move from stage to stage so everything wireless 324 wireless mics and uh, sound sources for the five stages and we concentrate now on the, the central stage which is called the FOP and the FOP was equipped with uh, Cal speakers and here I hand back to Jose. Okay, um, thanks. So the, um, what we call the FOP or the field of play is this uh, super big LED screen that is in the center. There's actually a ramp in it so you can come inside the, the arena through that ramp. And so around the field of play, uh, we placed um, 16 cows that were angled back. Um, the reason for cow was it was less obtrusive in the, in the sight lines. So we could, actually, um, we could actually afford to have the sound image coming from the right direction by having a, a, a low sightline obstruction uh, in front of the people. And eventually uh, it was decided to maximize the headroom uh, to angle the, the loudspeaker, the cow speakers back. Uh, as you can see, uh, I will show that slide later, but we angled them back so we had less steering involved so that we could um, maximize the headroom in front of us. In the small, um, and in so, the small- So Jose, so Jose, uh, out of curiosity, that means that you basically narrowed the beam to conserve energy and then did the pointing mechanical. Is that how you should interpret it? So uh, not all of them, but this, those 16 cows were angled back mechanically to, yes, to maximize the headroom. Uh, there's two side effects by beam steering. One is that you, your, um, um, your coverage will curve and we'll see that in the prediction later. So we were avoiding this curvature of the beam of the steering and uh, we were maximizing the headroom. It turns out 27 degrees were, uh, was our estimation and we could use the, we could take advantage of changing the steering and the angle, I think top of my head, the steering was down two or three degrees to accommodate for uh, the estimation we had. Does that answer your question? Yeah, thank you very much, awesome. Um, so yeah, we'll get to that. We'll get to the predictions. I just wanted to point out this uh, pink square is the front of house, is the mixing position. So the person that is mixing this stage is located into this shed under the sitting area. And um, so he doesn't have visibility. He has very limited visibility to the field of play. And he has almost no direct sound off of a cow. Uh, so he's located there. We'll get back to we'll get back to that. But so you, you can keep in mind where he was uh, located. So this is the the angling. I couldn't find a picture without weather protection. <laughs> um, that's the the cows angled back, and there's a UP Junior as a front fill, but the front fill is matrixed is matrixed to the um, is actually matrixed to the um, main arrays and not to the cows. So this is the this is the drawing. And this is the prediction of the cow being tilted back. So as you can see at the bottom of the screen, we are using a five degree beam and it's angled down three degrees um, to, to cover this area. So we are actually aiming on top of the head of the people with a super narrow beam and try to cover as far as we can, uh, bleeding into the second part of the sitting. Um, the, the bleeding is, is a handoff is to hand off with the cows that will be on the uh, next level. Martin, anything to add? Yep, no, nothing to add. Uh, just to explain the arena, the four stages were on a level of plus 5.5 meters above the ground level. That's why we call it 5.5. Yeah, so this place here is level 5.45, yes. Okay, so that's the that's the prediction. That's the only that's the four cows on the on the floor. Uh, we we did the prediction on only one fourth of the arena for 
computer power efficiency. Um, if we could validate one fourth of the arena, we knew that we could we could unfold like a piece of paper. We could unfold the design into all three other parts of the arena. Uh, so that's the lower cows around the field of play. Uh, and that's one cow view from above. And that's the four of them uh, seen from the top view. Um, in the prediction, the up tilt or the down tilt angle are slightly different. So uh, some are at minus three and some are at minus two. And it's to it's this is to compensate the um, the the play in the in the mounts and the play in the mounting of the seats. So not all the angles are equal, and that's um, small adaptations that we made on the spot. Uh, that's the next level of of Cal. So now we have the field of play in the center, and then uh, what Martin mentioned as level 5.5, .5, which is 5.5 .5 meters above the field of play. Um, is this green walkway where um, people can walk around um, as the entrance, but also in between the stage itself as a link in between the stage for uh, for the cast. And so the cows, uh, there's um, 20 cows around there, around this area. And these cows are upright, so they are not mechanically tilted back. And there's a good reason for that. So that's the that's the setup. The cow on the right here, is beaming to the top of the sitting and the, the cow that is facing the stage is used as a surround effect. And so I'll get back to the surround effect. But the point here is the cow here is upright. And the reason it is upright is so that we could have the, the lobe in the back being going upwards and not shooting into the people in the front. So uh, even though our priority is facing the people, uh, he's covering the people here, uh, our interest, or here, our interest is also here, see this lobe here, because we beam up in the front, it's also beaming up in the rear, and uh, that was cleaning up the stage a little bit more, so we could avoid um, uh, muddying and getting some gain before feedback, extra gain before feedback in this configuration. Does that, that make sense? Absolutely. It's, okay. uh, some, it's, it's something that we didn't discuss in the introduction to Cal, how, how digital beam steering gives you uh, a down tilt on both sides or an up tilt on both sides. Uh, it is not a seesaw, uh, as you would expect. Yeah. Yes. Uh, and so that's, um, these, these cows are very narrow. They cover 5 degrees and they end up 21 degrees uh, up to the top of the arena. Again, it's, uh, there's different up tilts. Uh, this one is 21 degrees. Um, the next one is a little bit lower. Um, the top of the arena is about the top of the roofs of the city. Uh, noise constraint was a priority. Uh, minimizing the noise constraint was a priority. So we're trying to avoid, we, we try to be very precise with, with that. Uh, that's a view of the um, five cows in the level, on level 5.5. Uh, a single cow again in on 5.5 and then all five of them playing level 5.5. Five. So and then there's the, the last 12 cows were used as surround relays. And in this graphic you will see you see the if you see the red line or the or sorry the range line, the orange line is a, is a ring of UPA speakers. So all these UPA speakers are pointing inward into the arena and they are divided into um, triangles or areas and act as surround loudspeakers. Um, to avoid bringing back UPAs to, to the front, we used the cow, as you saw in the picture before, we used cows that were facing inwards as a relay speakers to uh, the surrounds so that the footprint would stay as as uh, small as possible um, but still um, providing the effect and so uh, martin i don't know um, maybe you'd like to add about the effects the way surrounds were were used 
Well, the surrounds were mainly used to have a diffuse uh, sound field, creating ambiences and uh, creating atmosphere. It was not meant to have a localization of uh, the surrounds. It was kind of flocks of birds. It was cow meadows. It was water. It was just as diffuse as possible. So we could go with UPAs and we could go with... Uh, with the CALs as surround speakers, and we would use uh, parts of the subwoofers to augment the headroom. But this is something that Jose will talk about later. Yeah, um, um, I would just like to take a, a small parenthesis. If, if you could tell us about the, the artistic process and the way you had to deal with the composers, the cast, uh, Daniela Finzi Pasqua that was um, uh, doing the whole thing. Uh, how was the interface between the crew uh, and the uh, and and the, the sound system and the uh, the production? Um, basically, the the, the metteur en scène Daniele Finzi Pasca doesn't like any limits, as you can imagine. If you design a an arena first and it has five stages, uh, it's 360 degrees. You want to play 360 degrees. Um, the musicians. The musical part was meant to be live because there is a lot of local people, amateur musicians involved in this. It was a choir of 1,000 people. And I was in between the demand of having a Olympic opening ceremony played by amateur musicians on five stages with radio mics for people who have never ever worked with microphones before. So I had to find ways and communication uh, schemes to get my uh, objective, which was a, a perfect sound for the audience, then I wanted to give the freedom to the, to the metteur en scène and I ju just didn't want to limit him constantly on his uh, ideas, on his creativity. And on top, I had to handle the, the musical director and uh, make musical decisions possible or explain him why it wouldn't be wise to do it the way he thought or she thought that it would be nice to have it. Okay, th well, thank you. Um, I just wanted to share um, an impression we had. Uh, um, well, I have a picture that describes it. So yeah, we'll, we'll talk about this uh, later. Uh, okay, so this is the, uh, again, what I was mentioning uh, is these cows here are used as uh, surround relays. And so this is the prediction. We have a cow uh, here in the center that is facing back. Uh, it's here. It's this guy and he's facing back towards the audience, but he's angled this way and has a 30 degree beam. So here we use a wide beam to make it as diffuse as possible so that uh, it's hard to localize where it's coming from. Um, as, as a relay for the UPAs, they will be um, situated around, they'll be here. Uh, so the UPAs will be situated here. And so um, this diffuse sound is going to participate to the ambient noise, the ambience of, of um, what is of the content. Um, so in the tuning process, I'll get back to the tuning process, but you can see here the whole arena and, uh, we ended up with a couple places where we wanted to have improvements. So, uh, these seats here and these seats here in general, the seats behind the masts, uh, were slightly less covered by the cows. The reason for that is the width between the stage, um, was sufficient to preclude the coverage. Even though Cal covers 110 degrees, uh, we couldn't cover as wide. And it's what, it was quite hard to bring sound um, up here uh, behind the, um, the, the tower. So thanks to the, mat the matricing we could uh, use, uh, we actually could matrix the sound that was coming off the cows and use these UPQs here and Lina arrays to uh, complement the coverage in these areas. So the next uh, slides are going to show, are going to show uh, this. This is the, this is all the cows. This is the, um, 
This is all of 36 cows uh, facing the audience. And you can see, so uh, as you can see, this area here and this area here is a little bit too blue. Uh, so this is something we discovered there. Uh, we tried to orient the cows. One of the area we wanted to be very careful is here because these two places, these spots here, are getting the choir. So we don't want feedback. Uh, we want to be able to use reverberation in it, but we don't want to open up microphones in, in front of a choir and then feedback into these uh, loudspeakers. So we want to be, um, instead of having the cow that is placed here, instead of having this cow a little bit too in, uh, more inward and this one here also inward and covering the stages, we preferred to use the um, the um, UPQ that was sending there, and there was a Lina array here. So we decided to use that um, to augment the coverage. And if I, yes, so this is on the right side of the screen, it's the Lina array. Uh, that is um, the rear, that is also used as the rear, as the frontal system, sorry, for the stage. Uh, so using this different mattressing, we could feed also the center stage signal into there. UPQ is the same here. And so this, the next slide is showing all the cows facing forward, plus the Lina array fill and the UPQ fill. And so that's a decision we had to take on the spot and was uh, uh, the flexibility of the matrix we had was um, allowed to do that. That was great. Actually, if, if we're talking about matrixing, um, my concern from the beginning was that we do not get enough information uh, upfront on how the setup will be on site because uh, the metteur en scène, the director, he didn't give precise answers. He always said, once we're in the arena, we will know. And so I decided for a full, I call it full matrix. So. Every signal could be on every console and every loudspeaker could be uh, receiving signal from every console. So we had a, a, a Dante-based network with the 10 consoles and in the Dante network there were 6,000 audio channels present and we could send any channel to any console and any output from any console to any loudspeaker all mixed together in one in a redundant matrix which could cover 512 inputs to 512 outputs. Yes. Uh, so uh, yeah, it's, that's the arena. Um, that's, a, that's a reminder of the general layout. So we've been through the configuration. Obviously there are the masts that hold the line arrays, each mast is covering 360 degrees for each stage. And this layout, in this layout, this is all the other speakers, not the mast. So yellow are the cows, uh, green are the UPA surrounds, and red are the subwoofers. And what, uh, just to get back at what Martin said, uh, the, each stage has a mixing position. So. There's a mixing position here, there's a mixing position here, there's one here, and there's one here. And all the mixing positions are mixing for the stage that is across from the field. Uh, so everybody's listening to the direct sound, but across, across from the field. And um, there is a, and then this is the mixing position for the center stage. So uh, that's where it's situated. So this is where, all the consoles are located and this is where all the fibers were uh, ending so that we could connect the uh, systems and then there were a bunch of galaxies involved uh, so just for reference look at the subwoofers so the subwoofers are under the seating because we couldn't figure an array that we could use to to push out so we had to use an interesting feature of the galaxy uh, we could adapt the delay matrix. So the delay matrix in the galaxy, there's a delay matrix that allows delay for each cross point. So every subwoofer gets his own galaxy output. And the propagation time between this place and the subwoofer uh, is, so subwoofer here, the subwoofer 13 here uh, is delayed 
by the propagation time of this stage. And even though this stage here has a different propagation time, and this one has a, another propagation time, we could accommodate for all the propagation time of uh, each stage into every subwoofer. So each subwoofer is fed five signals from each stage, but delayed in time to wait for the signal that all the signals arrive at the same time. So it was a nice feature to have there um, that didn't make the tuning any easier, but it was fun to play with. And so that's the fault of these people here. That's all their fault because these uh, people are playing, the, uh, playing drums on the uh, field of play. And so we weren't sure that Cal was um, having enough headroom uh, because we meant it initially for voice. Uh, for voice content and intelligibility. It was optimized for intelligibility. Uh, but then, um, yeah, then the, pr the producers show up with the drums and barrels and people hitting the barrels. And so we included the subwoofers into the frequency response of the uh, cows um, so that we could have percussive effects and low end, uh, low frequency enhancement or effects uh, through that. So uh, that's the subwoofers under the arena. They are, they are being hanged, um, 56 of them. It took four days <laughs> to hang them, um, as you can see. And so that's a, that's a 3D modeling of where the, where the subwoofers are. And as you can see, this is the, um, the um, uh, coverage pattern of one fourth of the arena. And so uh, here, the, so here on top you see the um, delay matrix with all the different uh, timing, uh, cross point timings. And the EQ here is the EQ for the feed from the center stage. So even though it was 1100 uh, loudspeakers and they have a cutoff frequency around 63 hertz. So cheating with EQ, we tried to augment the, um, the frequency response of the signal that is going into the uh, 1100. So the 1100 behave normally when it gets signal from the normal arrays, but the signal coming from the center mixing position that is also feeding the cows, we tried to, to uh, catch up in the low mid range with the cows. And the reason we could afford to do that is because the, the cows were, had a lower gain overall than the main systems. So because we were running the subwoofers at minus, around minus 20, 25 dBs, we could afford to push this EQ to try to get back some um, mid-range element uh, back into the cow to gain headroom to allow for uh, percussive uh, elements. And that's Martin's idea. And due to the fact that the content was not uh, uh, pop music or pop band, but mostly classical and contemporary music, uh, we could afford to not have such a punchy impact on the low end for this situation. So we were fine with something giving us the impression of a large arena and uh, with the, the proper uh, displacement of the subwoofers, we were even able to have some impact and not too much of a smearing. And the adding the low mids uh, helped us to get a, a more full range musical sound out of the cows, and it was quite impressive the result to listen to the result. And we were not meant to go 120 dB with the whole system, so over the three hours, the mean was 85 dB A. LEQ. Yeah, so that's the goal. Um, that was one of the goals is not being too loud, um, sounding as natural as possible, especially because we have low uh, a low impact in the in the um, in the sight lines. So trying to keep the level low, but intelligible as much as much intelligible as possible uh, was a kind of a challenge. But I think we uh, I think it kind of worked. Uh, at least that's what the newspaper said. 
Um, so yeah, I want to get back to the field of play and, and uh, just pay tribute to uh, someone that was here in the small uh, cabin. So this is the mixing position for the cows. This is mixing position for the field of play. And uh, Boris is in there and he's attending the call. Uh, so I hope everything I've been saying is true. Um, so um, Boris is in this small uh, cabin under the seating. He doesn't have, he can't hear the cows directly. He has a pair of monitors, so we made a couple of settings. One settings, one setting for his monitor was flat, so he'd, he'd hear his own mix. Uh, and then he could switch to a different setting where he, um, the monitors were EQ'd and delayed to be a, a uh, relay system for the cows that were uh, outside. And so he's been, uh, he's been doing a, a fantastic job of, of keeping the intensity of the music, but also um, um, managing the, the headroom he had in the cow, he had left in the cow by using a mastering suit of, of uh, plugins. Uh, so it's been a great job. Um, I don't know what Mart Martin, if you want to add something about his work. I, I can add just that the, the final number was a samba. Uh, and the samba number is quite percussive and it moves and all the audience was moving. Everybody was dancing. The cast, everybody from the cast was on the in the arena to play part of this final number. And I was on the radio talking to the systems engineer and he would tell me how many dBs we would have left in the cows. And I was pushing to hit harder, 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 but I had to avoid that the cows go into overload. And uh, Boris was uh, on the master fader pushing, 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 and he did an incredible job. Every show sounded just amaz amazing, really amazing job. And I want to thank from here also once again, Boris, uh, for having done this job and the circumstances being inside this cabin with 35 degrees outside temperature, you can imagine how hot it was inside. And uh, it was just uh, outstanding. So the whole crew was outstanding. The performance was outstanding. And we're still connected in a WhatsApp group and we have daily chats and it's still, a, uh, it, it, put us together really was. Uh, on this screen, it's the whole crew. So uh, obviously you can't do this alone. And, and that's the, that's the crew the, um, that's the mixer position, the RF, uh, everybody that was uh, involved in audio is, is present in this picture. Um, so that's the whole crew that was doing the whole thing and installed. So they spent the three, was that three months there? Yeah. We started this time around the year last year. So the 2nd of May, we started with installation and we ended the 15th of, 15th of August. Um, in the preparation to this event, so we, in, um, um, before the setup, we all went to Paris. The main provider was uh, our friend from Duchot in France. And um, so we managed to get all the uh, console, the galaxies, the everything that was having a computer, especially 48 cows, um, was um, um, put together in Paris. And so we could put the network together, we could put all the elements together and, and validate all the concepts, all the small elements had been validated, but then eventually we could validate the whole concept. And regarding the cows, this is the nursery that we had, so uh, all 48 of them are in, in between flight cases and cardboard boxes, but you are looking at all 48 cows and uh, they're all connected and what we are doing here is to uh, speed up the tuning process, we were assigning our beams to the presets of this cow. So uh, even though we had uh, predictions and we knew what we wanted as a beam, uh, we also knew that mechanical construction is not entirely precise, and so that there will be uh, some adaptation we will have to do. So, uh, preset number one was loaded with the actual preset meant for this position, uh, the position the cow was assigned to, and then we were using a plus two degrees and plus minus two degree um, a beam, and then we had the original beam as preset number four but one notch wider, so five degrees wider. Uh, this allowed to speed up the tuning process once it's installed. 
we could validate the different beams and uh, even though we had to set up some more beams some beams again uh, the interesting thing was uh, you set the beam and then you're like okay i would like to try two degrees up you go two degrees up and you see if you get more um more coverage or more intelligibility and then you can decide if you go in between and so reload the preset or just keep well, keep that preset and then we could move forward um but that's the calendar story uh it took uh, half a day to load all the presets um the good thing is everybody was they were all happy to uh, load the presets so um that's that's part of the preparation that we had uh, available which was great and the tuning this is a this is a picture i took during the tuning uh um, as you can see all the cows are here i'm working on the on the 5.5 level cows so i'm working on these guys uh actually these guys um uh, because you can see these guys are having their weather protection uh cow is rated ip65 uh when it's installed in a in a vertical position uh when it's angled back nobody was entirely sure to say to certify it for rain uh so we mostly protected them and everybody was great to react to protect them um in the tuning process um well there were the main masts but then the tuning process for the cows was mainly very fine coverage and so most of the work we did was very fine that every we were overcoming the mechanical constraints so uh maybe the pole was one or two degrees off or the arena was slightly different in one place than the other and so most of the work in the tuning process was making sure that up to the degree to one degree we were aiming in the right direction in the right position so it turns out not all the cows had the same beam coefficients or the same beam settings and the reason was because the mechanical constraints so in the tuning process most of it was about verifying the coverage was exactly where we wanted to be and 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 not leaving up to a mechanical uh, drift uh, that we could allow in the main mast but we could not allow in the in this uh, in these uh, speakers so most of the tuning was that and then uh, um, frequency response tuning and then from there uh, matching everyone we optimized it a little bit for voice so we optimized the frequency response to be um, a little bit more uh intelligible i will say and less and less of a workload for boris in his small shed here uh he's in here um hopefully um also this picture is representing the tuning because it's been nine half days so i spent uh nine mornings doing the tuning and then a couple extras but uh in general it was nine mornings doing the tunings and every day it rained so if every one of you has been tuning loudspeaker system of this scale under rain you, you'd hope that one day you, you would have one day without rain it didn't happen it rained every day and this is this give you this is giving you an idea of uh, the measurement microphone under uh, the helmet to be protected while we were doing low frequency measurements um, because yeah i wasn't too happy um, and this picture is again is give you an idea of the scale so the mast across from the venue so i'm talking about this speaker system is uh, 100 meters away from the microphone so it's about 340 milliseconds of travel time and um, um i think martin can share his experience but at some point there is a five-year-old girl standing on this stage and she's whispering and she's whispering in your ear across the venue that was that was very impressive Yep, that's true. Um, the speech uh, reproduction that was just incredible. That was an, uh, even at positions in front of the cows, people having standing basically in front of the cows and being reinforced for twenty thousand people to hear them loud and clear and proper was not an issue. There was everything. Everything was possible basically it was just a huge playground for me and uh, uh, i discovered a lot of things that i didn't know before that are really possible in reality so yeah at the end you can see there's the cows are here so just to, to demonstrate the low visibility of the 
uh, of the Cal settings one is, uh, is here. Uh, so that was the main idea was you could look at the stage and not be impaired by um, speakers in between you and the venue or you and the character and the cast, but you could still, the sound is coming from the, from the right uh, direction. And um, uh, I forgot to mention a that there was a... Sorry, a quick note to the masts. Of course, the masts are massive and uh, they are in front of your uh, view. And I, at one uh, moment in, in pre-production and development and planning, I told that I don't need two masts. I can go with one mast. There is no stereo. Um, so I could put the mast in the middle of the stages and they decided, no, it is not possible to have only a single mast because it would be in the walkway of the fire brigade. So it would be an, an obstacle also for people movement because underneath this uh, arena, there are uh, hallways and there is a lot of people moving. 5,000 people are moving inside this arena during the play. So the position of the mast was defined by other reasons than sound only. And that's the reason why we have double uh, view obstruction than necessary uh, for the main systems. Yeah, that's correct. Um, one of the things I forgot to mention is uh, there was a time max matrix inserted in the system and it was possible to uh, move the image of the character. So they, they were, the signals fed to the cows were sometimes delayed, if I remember correctly, so that they were, the positions were anchored into where the people uh, were. Yeah, we avoided right. tracking, but we did some presets on the Timex to have a, a more precise uh, location. Yeah, and so that's, that's concluding our presentation. Uh, if you have questions, feel free to make the chat explode. Um, this is one of the good days. We had good days, good weather. It was great. And uh, we had days where we had uh, more interesting events and one, uh, one show had to be evacuated. Remember, it's Switzerland, so everybody stood up and woke out uh, calmly. But um, uh, yes, it's been under rain, under thunderstorm, under the wind uh, for a month, uh, under extremely high temperatures, and it all survived. And that was also a task for the cows. There was an evacuation system, and some of the cows were powered by UPS so that they would last even if we would have a power failure. And we could have 100 dB of sound reproduction uh, with the evacuation situation. Even if we wouldn't have had any power anymore, we would have been able to have for half an hour a 100 dB of evacuation message in the arena. Melan, you are muted. Yeah, I'm known to do that. Um, did you make use of the override feature for that purpose? No, uh, it's upstream. So the, um, the, um, the, the matrix that feeds the cows is upstream from uh, the cows. Thank you. Um, the thing is, so the evacuation process here is this one big button, uh, fire brigade hits the button, uh, evacuation message are sent through the sound system and shown on the display. So the screens are also showing uh, routes, evacuation routes, if I remember correctly. Uh, but it's it's one trigger triggers the whole sequence of events that yells to the uh, evacuation, and so um, that trigger would recall a preset on all consoles to mute all outputs at the same time, so that there was no sound anymore, not not in the in ears, not in the monitoring, not, never, and it would just cut off all the audio transmission and just replay uh, the the evacuation message for everybody. Awesome. Uh, very much, very much appreciated. Um, of course, we also saw those very interesting masts. And uh, <laughs> we're very much hoping that there will be a part two once we get to uh, Leo Family Products. Uh, because I'm, I'm sure that, uh, like myself, everybody's dying to hear about those masks, which look <laughs> evenly, you know, even evenly impressive. Um, but we'll cover that. We'll cover that another time. Uh, that being said, uh, I would like to very much thank um, fellow Meyer Sound uh, colleague uh, Jose Godin, as well as his guest Martin Reich, 
uh, for doing this wonderful presentation. And that means um, that uh, I propose that we uh, look at the chat uh, and I will try to uh, coordinate any Q&A that you might have for let's say three, four, five minutes at most and then, uh, and then we're gonna call it a day. Yeah, we're here. Uh, ask any questions. We're happy to answer all the questions uh, that you could have. And I just want to recognize Eric Alvernia that is on the chat. Eric is the former owner of Dusho, and I managed to place him on one of the slides. You can see him here. Um, um, Eric made most of, of the technical stuff happen. Is he's been um, he's been great helping making this technical this even happen. <laughs> but he didn't see a, he didn't see a haircut in the past couple of days it seems there was already corona last year so there was no hairdressers no joke um i want to thank also Dusho for the work they did uh, for me it was just a, a dream come true just to to have an idea to talk to people and then they say yes no problem we will do so. We will help you doing this and we will help you achieve your goals. That's not, not so often anymore these days, I can tell you. Mainly if you have an idea, people tell you it's too expensive, forget it. Who will pay for this? But this in this production, this wasn't the case. I was always supported by everybody involved. Excellent. Well, thank you for giving us uh, uh, some amazing insight in how you can uh, apply Cal loudspeakers in a creative, creative environment, in a creative process. Okay, um, the chat is cooling down from what I can tell, which means that we've gotten to the end of today's webinar. Um, I'm going to share my screen because uh, I have uh, a couple of uh, household notes uh, to finish today's uh, presentation. So I'm going to ask uh, Jose to please stop sharing his screen. And then uh, we'll go back to, to over here. Okay, so there we go. So uh, a recording of today's webinar you can find on the YouTube uh, Thinking Sound channel um, after today's uh, session where you will find this. Um, which uh, is drawing a lot of attention. As you can see, we have uh, over 17,000 viewers, which is amazing. And what I would also like to point out is um, Jose mentioned the extensive matrixing that is going on in Fête de Villon. And that means that uh, for those that want to know more about matrixing, uh, next week is going to be the Cine Studio Week, where we're going to talk about cinema and studio uh, applications. And uh, this Monday, we will also talk about channel delivering and matrixing. And of course, we can talk about the uh, summing matrix as well as the delay matrix that was used at great length during this event. Um, tomorrow, my Spanish colleague, Hugo Arce, will do another Cal uh, case study uh, of an equally impressive project, which is uh, the Azteca uh, Stadium in uh, Mexico. So be sure... Um, um, to watch that webinar as well, which will show you again uh, many, many applications of CALS. Over here you can already see CALS living at the edge of the stage. Um, so that will be another, uh, another application of uh, CAL, another case study. I already mentioned that these recordings will be uploaded to YouTube. And that brings us to the end of today's webinar. And um, uh, all that's left to do is to thank you uh, for being here. I would like to thank uh, Jose and Martin Reich uh, once more. And uh, please stay healthy and please uh, remain uh, safe. See you next time. Okay, bye-bye. See you, bye-bye.